Hi, good morning everyone. Let's get started with this particular topic which is on archiving in SAP. Basically why we need archiving, what is an archiving? So application data is stored in files on the hard disk, which is deleted in the database, evaluated in files without reloading the database. So what happens is that here you can see this is your R3 database. Okay, this data need to be archived. So this need to be archived. So for archiving what happens is there is step one, we need to store this in files on the hard disk. So once it is stored, we know it is there, then we come and drill it in the database and evaluate it in file without loading into the database. Okay, so let's see. To prevent confusion with other data backup and archiving methods, we define data archiving as the removal of application data belonging to the completed business processes from the database. Say for example, if the audit requirement is say 5 years. So to make sure that the business process data for more than 5 years, that is from anything more than 5 years should be archived so that your database size remains in a acceptable limit. Otherwise, it will keep on increasing forever like anything. The removal data, that is the removed data is compressed and stored in another location. For example, in a file system, in an optical archive or in a hierarchical storage management system. Okay, so to access the data stored in archive files, you can use application reports. You can also access the archive data to archive information system. So data archiving is basically we are just giving a clarification that what is data archiving. We just saw the definition but just want to make sure that you know exactly what is not covered in archiving. Say for example, reorg of database. This is not archiving. So reorganization of database. Basically what it does is that it comp it basically whatever say for example your database is having say empty spaces because of deletion of data in between some table is deleted some rows are deleted so the data there is a gap created and while organizing the data that gap is removed so that is called reorganization backup or restoring of the data backup basically we just take the backup just to make sure that uh, there is a contingency installed so that whenever there is a failure of system we can restore it. Database offline will do log files. These are files are also called archive files. Okay, so archive offline will do log files. Then optical archiving for outgoing documents, pull lists, scan documents. So these basically are not archiving. So database reorganization is independent of data archiving. Data archiving cannot be used to remove test data from the database. Okay, so we just saw this is basically this is what the archiving is. Uh, to data archiving is the removal of application data belonging to the completed business processes. Okay, now why do we need to archive data? Large data volumes increase storage capacity requirements and administrative outlay for the database. To check the fill size and size of the database, we can use the transaction called DB02 and we can go to the tables and indexes there. Database security often requires mirroring or replication of data. Hardware investment increases with the data volumes to be administered. Also the time needed for database backup increases in proportion with the volume of data to be backed up. Okay, so if you don't archi archive the data, the size of the database keeps growing and along with that the database, the performance reduces, the backup takes more and more time. Okay, in daily business, departmental end users experience performance problems when, for example, an entire table must be searched. If indexed access is available, an index for a large table can also be 
become very large. Searching a large index is more time consuming than searching smaller index trees. Using data archive to reduce the size of database table is advantageous both for database administrators and for department and end users. Okay, data archiving process. So basically the step one is shown here. So in step one what we are doing is using the right program for an archiving object. So we find out the archiving object for a business process and those objects we write them into the archive file. So you have archive file 1, archive file 2. So once it is written, then make sure that it is written. It is written successfully. After that, there is a delete program for archive file 1. Okay, so basically the start can be triggered manually or automatically for this. Okay, same thing basically I'm just explaining this how and what happened in the previous slide. Data archiving can run parallel to normal user workload. Its effect on the system performance depends on the archiving object used and the amount of data to be archived. Before deleting data in the database house, the delete program compares the contents of the archive files with the same data stored in the database. Deletion takes place only if both sets of data are identical. Okay, so basically the confirmation is very important. Just to make sure that we have uh, it fully written in the files before we can trigger the deletion. Okay, now archiving object. Okay, here you can see that uh, this is your archiving object. Here this is your R3 database, you have identified the archiving objects, so R3 application data objects, customizing for an archiving run, write program for the archiving object, delete program for the archiving objects and optionally program, optional program for creation of index. So archiving application data references information stored in the archiving objects in the archiving database. Only R3 system data that is described in the archiving objects can be archived. An archiving object describes a logical unit of business data that belongs together. Okay, so basically it should be uh, the completed business processes, completed transactions, completed entries only can be complete, can be archived. An archiving objects contain the following elements. Information about tables containing data to be archived. Okay, you can create your own archiving object for customer tables. You can use transaction A, O, B, J for that. Okay, and archiving objects contain the following main elements. So basically the information about tables containing data to be archived. A write program that selects the data and writes it to the archive file of files. A delete program that compares the data in the archive files with the data in the database and deletes the database data provided both are identical. Documentation for archiving object and customizing setting for archiving run. So using transaction DB15 which provides information about which database tables belongs to which archiving object and vice versa. Okay, here you can see the archive development kit. This is your database. This is your uh, SAP archive link application. Okay, so archive development kit basically it's the adjustment of code page, structure changes, number format, compression, file handling. All this is there in this particular archive development kit. Okay, then here you have the operating system. This is your archive file. Then archiving system with tertiary storage media. So the archive development kit is the interaction, uh, basically the interface between the archiving programs of the applications and the archive files. The archive program use the function modules of archive development kit to write the archives data to disk. 
archive data is selected using application programs the adk performs the physical access to the archive data adk sometimes splits the data to be archived among several archive files and compresses the data automatically if you use the sap archive link interface for secure storage of archive media the adk transfers the data from the archiving program to sap archive link if an abap program accesses an archive link the adk ensures that the data is returned in the same format as currently found in the archive repository you can use the adk to create your own archiving objects and use these archive objects from tables defined by your company do not use the adk to create archiving objects for archiving data from tables defined in the archive standard now safekeeping of archive files okay so it is very important that the archiving system with tertiary storage media are the files are in a secure position so there are different methods you can do that you can use either hcm that is hierarchical storage management system you can use an external archive system through sap archive link or you can manually administer it okay now accessing the archive data is pretty important because it's an audit requirement say for example you need that data for say audit requirement you should be able to access the data could be for reporting and analysis purpose could be for direct access in special case you may be be required to reload that data so just make sure that we have the data available we have access to the data so that all that can be achieved the sap archive information system that is sap ais is an archiving environment integrated generic tool for implementing searches in archive data archives so basically what this archive information system is in this system it will help to search very easily the archive retrieval configurator allows you to create archive information structure with the help of field catalog and to fill the structures with data from the archive okay to work with the archive information systems you can use transaction calls sari okay then let's see this particular transaction before we move further so this is your system and let's say i am interested in the archive administration so this is the transaction sari is the transaction we need to select the archiving object okay we can select the archiving objects these are basically the pre delivered archiving objects available okay so let's select one of the archiving object as a step 1 basically you need to write okay so you need to write it to the to the storage to the archiving device after the return is successfully after the write operation has happened successfully you can delete it and if required you can read this and you can generate the reports out of it so that is about the archive administration so just take note of the transaction which is sara okay now let's go into the hierarchical storage management systems archive information system you have the archive explorer status customizing if you click on archive explorer here you can see okay which object is there and this basically sees tells that this object is not getting archived it's not in the archive explorer so basically using this tool you can find out where the archive data is available and when you are getting into an archiving project these are the things basically these are the faces of the archiving project okay so that is about it so basically what you saw use transaction sara sara then maintain at least one variant for each specific archiving run object say two variants for delete programs archiving run one variant for archiving run okay then monitoring an archive archive program we just need to make sure that the archiving went successfully without any errors okay then for the archiving we need to make sure that 
while doing this with whichever user we are working it should have enough authorization so this is the archive object and operations of on jobs basically this is the uh, object which the user should have access to these objects okay that's all i wanted to cover in this archiving section thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye